Okay. All right. All right. We'll kick off. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'm Scott Johnson. I'm head of North America for Simple Cloud. Um, with me here, I've got Olivier Wolf joining from Europe, who's a CEO of Simple Cloud as well. Um, and today we're, we're um, having a discussion on the future of education. And uh, today, in terms of our agenda, we're going to um, Right, joining us, we have Christoph Gomez, who's um, head of game design for Art Center College in Pasadena. And then we have um, uh, James Simpson, who's who's um, head of uh, the Center for um, Digital Production at Rose Bruford College in the UK. Yeah. Um, with that, um, and so we're going to have a discussion, um, kind of to have um, discussion with both both attendees, and then um, uh, at the end, we're going to give a quick demo of a new feature that we've we've unveiled for our platform, dealing with um, um, help, helping with the collaboration on our side. But before I kick off, um, I wanted to pass the mic over to Olivier to give a little background on Simple Cloud Education and, and our company. Well, hi everyone. Um, I'll, I'll be quick because the important bit is to hear uh, our education um, uh, friends, clients, uh, users uh, talk about, uh, about Simple Cloud Education. But basically the company was formed 12 years ago serving media and entertainment, architecture, education, uh, in the world of uh, cloud computing and high performance services. And we operate a global workplace as a service platform for education and training and help in other verticals as well. Uh, we are built on uh, IBM Cloud, VMware and uh, leveraging uh, NVIDIA GPU power. And we offer fully a comprehensive uh, um, workspace environment with Windows and Linux VMs, uh, and that works uh, and can be accessed from uh, from any device. Universities can uh, use it, uh, can use simple cloud education to solve a lot of different problematics. So the first one is evidently education uh, continuity, like during this, uh, this pandemic, but uh, importantly, onboarding of remote students and professors, uh, therefore basically extending your campus to the world uh, and offer equity in access to uh, resources for students uh, to complete the most demanding courses uh, without having to invest uh, in any sort of uh, uh, expensive hardware. We also offer built-in classroom management software, uh, which we'll de demo at the end of the, the webinar, and the efficient use of resources, because you can just uh, turn on and off the resources for just when you need it, and it can be absolutely customized by, by course with proper scheduling, profiles of machines type of software, uh, just as a click. Uh, it all operates in a 100% in a cloud environment, but very importantly, in a hybrid environment as well, and can be integrated with uh, LMS platforms. And we are in discussion with some of the prominent ones. And finally, we appear in, uh, in Gartner reports uh, on higher education, and we've been uh, declared uh, IBM champions and VMware champions for uh, 2021. That, that's a... Uh, Simple cloud in a nutshell, uh, but I think that what is important is what we do with uh, our colleagues and friends. So Scott, if you want to, to kick off. Sounds good. Um, let's see, Christoph, I think we'll start with you today. Um, let's see, you know, uh, I guess I mean, we've had uh, the entertainment design classes at Art Center on Simple pretty quickly from spring of last year. Um, can you tell us, I guess, a little bit about your experiences? Yes, sure. It was. A good experience, uh, but especially uh, we got hit by the lockdown very, very fast. So we didn't have much time to uh, uh, to switch from uh, everything on campus to everything uh, online. So, uh, uh, so what the school did, we closed the campus for a week, uh, cancelled classes, and and gave ourselves a week to switch. So it, were, so it was not a lot of time <laughs> for, to do that. Uh, luckily, uh, I was familiar with Simple Cloud initially. I've been running some tests, so uh, so I had a, a very good understanding of what it could do. So uh, so that did help a lot. Um, so uh, after that, it just was just for me a matter of getting our, our school's IT department up to speed on on on, on the system to, to do so, some uh, some demos. Uh, I think the most challenging task was to to set up. Uh, uh, a VPN tunnel for so that the, uh, the students of the Simple Cloud platform to access could access our uh, our licenses or software licenses. So, so that was 
uh, and it, it went very smoothly. So uh, uh, despite the time difference, uh, I think the team Super Cloud was in and is in Spain. So uh, uh, they were super, super reactive and were able to uh, to get this um, this going on in no matter of a couple of days. So a uh, little bit of back and forth between our IT team and uh, and Super Cloud and, uh, and we're up and rolling. So uh, onboarding all the students was also quite smooth uh, considering. Uh, I think the team at Superblown was also very, very uh, helpful by creating all the profiles for us uh, up front. So, uh, so we didn't have to guide every single student step by step to, to set up an account and, and so on. So, uh, so that, uh, uh, yeah, that allowed us in, in a matter of a week to go back. To, to turn around and get ready for when students were coming back uh, to class, but uh, online. So. Okay, great. Um, and, and then uh, let's see. I, I guess can you tell us about I guess some of the challenges you know you were considering as you as you were needing to move your classes online, I guess to contend with the situation. Yeah, in the but, spring. Sure. Uh, these classes are require a lot of uh, lab work, a lot of uh, so it's uh, with some lectures, of course, but it's mostly about. Uh, about doing about critique so uh, so getting access to uh, uh, students need to get access to the computer labs and, and, and work in, in during the class so uh, so that was the, the key uh, the key challenge to, to fix so uh, uh, you can un unreal on, uh, on some kind of a so slow computer but you don't get the performance uh, necessarily that you need to, to run it properly so so uh, same thing with software like zbrush maya so, so we had to uh, uh, but that's, that's the challenge to give access to the, uh, to the software, to the right version of the software, uh, to, for all the students to be able to uh, to perform their tasks uh, during class and, and share with the faculty, uh, give them feedback. So that was the most uh, the main challenge that we we are facing in our classes. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift over to um, to James. Um, James, on, on your side, I think um, you had a few slides you wanted to share. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I'm but maybe, I'm, James, maybe if you could give a maybe within your slides, but if you could give a maybe a little background on your department and absolutely, of Great. course. Um, I will I'll share the slide first, and that will give some context. So, um, yeah, we're we're Rose Bridford College. It's a university. Um, it's too small to be called a university, so it's actually a college. Uh, it's about a thousand students um, in. The, uh, sort of the greater London area. And we specialize in theater and drama and live performance. So it's all about making uh, theatrical performances. Everyone that's a student there is in some way engaged in creating theater. So you can imagine probably at the beginning of the pandemic, we struggled a little bit with the idea of how we were going to teach students theater when we weren't allowed to go into our theater spaces. Not to mention the struggles that students are having right now or trying to understand an industry that's closed indefinitely. Um, Certainly, we don't not expecting much theater to happen in 2021 and 2020 was pretty bad as well. So we're trying to come up with all sorts of new ways of um, delivering theater to students in a, in, a, in a crisis time. Just so happened that we were already investigating Simple Cloud and, um, uh, and developing some new courses in virtual theater making way before we knew that the pandemic was coming along. And uh, I'll take you into the Simple Cloud uh, journey uh, after I've, I've done some slides. But I thought it'd be really nice just to give you some context of some of the things that that we've been doing um, whilst we're in lockdown. Uh, we started off with a, a new building that we were building and some new facilities. And we uh, the very first phone call I made was to to Lee Phillips from from, uh, from Blue GFX, who I saw was on the call. Hi Lee, um, and just said we need some new computers. And he said you don't need new computers. You need you need simple uh, because that's the that's the solution that is most appropriate now for, for the sort of thing we're doing. And, it, and I'll, as I said, I'll, at the end, I'll talk you through why that was such a good idea, why it's such a good suggestion, and how it's really saved our necks when we got into the beginning of the pandemic. So the first thing that we were, were trying to do, a like we, week after we got locked in, which was you know, about almost a year ago, uh, we would had this imaginative idea that we're trying to do theatre over Zoom calls, which of course everyone was doing in the end. At the time, we were trying to look at how we could use Zoom uh, backgrounds to change scenic environments. And I'd just been to visit Harry Potter World in the UK just the week before with my son, who's a massive fan. Um, it was like literally the last thing we did before lockdown. And I had all these pictures and I said, I wonder if I can make these into backgrounds. So we, we tried some illustrations, there was the, the actual scenes themselves. And then uh, 
one of the bottom left is actually my favourite because it looks like we took a picture of the the roof of the um, the Hogwarts uh, the main dining room. But actually, that's a model box. It was only about this big. I've got my camera right underneath my phone, and in in Zoom, it was quite it was quite cool because it meant that you you could zoom it out and your brain fills in the gaps. It doesn't see a model; it sees a full scale uh, roof because our heads are actually that big. So it was quite uh, yeah, it's come up with some creative ideas. What we ended up doing was creating a performance which. Uh, was produced in Mozilla Hubs. And this is where we started to explore our world of simple because we had a student in California, a student in New York, a student in Shenzhen, China, and the director, Patrick, was in Ireland, and we were all in SIG Cup and sort of Greater London sort of managing the project. And we're trying to get all these performers and directors and technicians to work together on a production. So we used Mozilla Hubs as a VR platform. And uh, it looks very low quality <laughs> the graphics are quite cheesy but we pulled this together in about a week for a live production to uh 20 different different people uh they came in as their own vr avatars the avatars are performing and once you get engrossed in the story we sort of lost touch with the um with the world uh you know sort of the graphics it's sort of, you just get immersed in it a bit now the uh the characters themselves and all the graphics we were struggling to to get all our students to coordinate because we were accessing all of this through uh, our internet browsers so we're already working through, you know, PCs, laptops, different PC connections. In China, the, a Chinese student was having massive problems. He was working out of hotel rooms because he was constantly moving around China, getting put into quarantine. And there were the much stricter um, uh, rules in April last year than, uh, than the rest of the world was. So he had really terrible internet connections. So we're constantly struggling to get him to connect in. So we were um, getting some of our students to send him content via different cloud mediums. And we kept leaning on um, this idea that we, we need a sort of a, a, 3D, a 3D modeling uh, solution that we could, we could access through our browsers because that's how everybody was accessing their content at the time. Uh, another project we started engaging with is actually a research project that we, we won to develop a, a way of live streaming motion capture performers to anybody at home via augmented reality. Uh, so this is what we actually created in, in the end. There's a uh, you can just see the person standing on my keyboard. It's a live motion capture, capture performer. The performer's actually standing behind looking at a phone. It's all happening simultaneously. And we're able to deploy this to people anywhere in the world. And we, we actually got Olivia and his team to come and have a chat with these, these, this, these, these guys that were developing this because we felt that um, we could actually use a simple cloud uh, server as a, uh, a way of deploying the the entire application so people at home could log in to a virtual machine and work through uh you know this virtual computer with an unreal engine uh, instance running on it to be able to manipulate and control a 3d scene that ends up being some theater um ended up not developing it that way it all ended up sitting locally on our local network for the r d but we're we're back into another phase of testing at the moment and um, i'm pushing the simple uh banner to get that one on, on the project so um, that was all happening sort of over the summer and you know, throughout lockdown. In October, we had our students for the very first time. And we got, we got two new courses. One is the virtual theater and digital experiences, which is the students on the right. And on the left, we got our digital content design students um, in our new computer lab. Now, this is, this is our simple world. This is simple cloud education happening in, in, uh, in, in practice. You see little um, microcomputers, they're little Dell OptiTrax uh, systems. I can't remember the exact spec of them, but they're, they've got two outputs. We can run two screens and we've, uh, rather than building workstations, we just bought loads of these and deploy them uh, via, via Simple. So our students came into the classrooms and started accessing all of our 3D software, Maya, Unreal, etc., through that medium. And then when we got locked in again in November, um, in the UK, we kept going in and out um, from November back into Christmas and now we're still there. So every time they went home, they just took it home with them. You know, they had their workstations. And there's a lovely story, uh, Miyu sitting on the right, it's a Japanese student. She's actually, she's trying to get back to Japan um, because she's, uh, she's been on her own now for several months and she wants to be with her family. And we said, it's fine, just go because you're, uh, you know, you just take your computer with you. You just log in from Japan rather than from the UK, just make the time zones work. And she does these beautiful drawings. She's a fantastic artist and she does all this on her iPad. So she's only ever had an iPad. She hasn't got a computer. So she turned up on her first day of her iPad, downloaded the app and started accessing um, simple cloud education as a way of being able to get hold of Maya and uh, Photoshop. So then she was converting her, the, 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 the pen on her iPad Pro into a sort of you know, that's Wacom tablet on Photoshop. So she, she very quickly managed to transition all of her 
her skill sets over onto more advanced software without needing any technology. Now, the, the our piece of the resistance at uh, Rosebury for College is our new motion capture suite, and we're uh, working with our students to try to find ways to develop new content and new theatre experiences. Now, this is a, you know, I'm sort of showing off here, to be honest. We haven't started using this with Simple, but everyone loves a bit of motion capture content. So this is yoga with an ogre. Um, this is some of our students uh, developing some, they were developing at all. They were playing. They were teaching them how to use the system, and one of them started doing a yoga lesson. Uh, I just think it's hilarious having you know ogres, orcs, and grim. What's that as a kobold? It's a kobold character doing some yoga with a skeleton. Um, but they are all thinking about how they can transition their practice into the virtual space because the theatre industry is closed. You know, it's not opening uh, in the way that we would expect it to, and it could be it could be years before we really get back to theatre as it was. So the industry is woke now to this idea that we need uh, a new way of de deploying theatre. So we are virtualizing everything in every respect. We have motion capture performers in our space. Uh, we can then take that content and stream it to Motion Builder and Unreal Engine on a simple cloud education instance. So, and this is something to stress that we haven't done this yet. This is something we're working towards with the team. Um, and you know, in the end, uh, this is this is the this is the platform at the other end. This is Unity running. This is the app that, that I built for the students to use. But once that data is streaming from the cloud, uh, they can access this anywhere in the world and start using live motion capture data to create some live content. And who doesn't love a little bit of motion capture Star Wars? I do have a lovely stormtrooper doing a little boogie as well, which which everyone loves. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're trying to sort of transition our students into working in a virtual space because theatre is now becoming becoming virtual. Uh, and you know, this is ultimately the medium that they're all going to be working in. This is, this is all our students discovering virtual reality. We gave them all the headsets and we lost them for a day. Literally, this is all they did. Um, but deploying onto these platforms uh, requires a lot of technology that they just don't have access to. And while they've been at home, uh, we sent them all home with these headsets. They all took a VR headset home over Christmas because we we saw this lockdown coming um, and they've been building in Unreal and, and Maya using their simple cloud education accounts. And one thing that you can't do at the moment is you can't plug the, the VR headset into a laptop and access Unreal on simple cloud. The VR headset has to run um, on a dedicated graphics card if it's like a, an HC Vive. Uh, but with the Oculus Quest, you can sideload your app onto it. So we've been uh, teaching them how to, to, to build their own apps um, and then sideload them on so they can see how they work. Uh, but we've also, actually I should have added it into my slides, but we've also uh, been doing our, our lessons in VR platforms like VR Chat and Mozilla Hubs. So we'll all get together in one of those spaces and we'll all become a, an avatar of some sort, uh, like a, uh, a hot dog or a, a fog or a robot, and we'll all have our conversations in there. And it's a very interesting place to work. So these students, you know, they signed up for this course during a pandemic. They did the whole application process virtually. They're learning about a virtual medium and in a completely virtual way. And I'm not gonna say it's as good as the real world, like we'd love to be all together, but when we have staff meetings and we start to discuss um, uh, the impacts of lockdowns on all of our departments, and we go through all the departments and this, you know, the caution department, you know, how are you gonna cope? There's just like stretch marks and stress and, and everyone's panicking, oh, what are we gonna do? And, uh, and then you go to the scenic arts department, we have to build scenery for shows. And they go, how are you gonna cope? I said, what can we do? You know, we need to be in our workshop. We need our, our welders and our, our pillar drills and, you know, our buzz saws, you know, how are we gonna do it? And they get to the virtual courses and they go, so are you gonna be okay? And we go, yeah, we've just carried on. They haven't even changed the schedule. They just carry on working as they were. The only difference is rather than coming into the lab, we're delivering it over Zoom, um, but we're, we're logging in via simple cloud to, to, to get access to that software. So it's been a, um, it's, it hasn't been a perfect journey. <laughs> you know, our introduction to simple uh, for our students was supposed to be very different when we imagined it in the first place. But thank God we did, because when that lockdown hit us in March, we had our test subscription going. We hadn't started these new courses at that point. They started in September. Um, but we had one test subscription going for one user. And we were just sharing around to all the students. They all wanted, I need some, someone needs Photoshop, someone needs Premiere Pro. There is acting students that need to do a show reel. And how do we do that? So we, uh, we just kept passing this, um, this, this one subscription around to students as they needed something to help them with their, their issues. Um, I always had that at the end of my presentation, so ignore it, I should have deleted it. But 
yeah, so that's what that's what we've been up to. Um, but I can I can delve more into exactly what we've been doing with Simple. I gave some sort of ideas there. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of been quite exciting trying to do all of this during this this period. Um, we've come up with new innovative solutions that we wouldn't have done had it not been for the pandemic. So I suppose I, I don't you know I'm not, I don't want to say I'm grateful for the pandemic. That'd be awful. But we've um, we found the, the bet we found some positives from it. Yeah, you know, and we've we try to leverage on those um, because there's just too much, you know, too many negatives at the moment. Uh, it's nice to share something, something a little bit nice to come out of this. Okay, thank, thanks, James. Is um, um, that's awesome? Thanks for showing showing those examples. Is there is there anything else you want to cover um, on your side before, before I, I jump in and show the management tool? Uh, no, I mean, I suppose if you give me the chance, I'll shout out my company. I've got a company, CopperCandle.co.uk. Um, we also make virtual theatre experiences. So I've got two hats somewhere. Um, we're also looking, we haven't started yet, but we're looking at a simple cloud solution for running our studio. This is a very sensible way of, you know, managing a startup, frankly, because you can manage your costs as they come in and out. So I'm constantly bringing people in, freelancers, um, you know, into my studio, and then they go again very quickly as the project's finished. So uh, I just really like the simple cloud model as a way of managing the, you know, the, the, the startup. Thanks a lot, James. Uh, it, it was really a very interesting ride together and loads of additional things to do. And uh, we are participating together with the Association of Learning Technologies on a program uh, with ITV in the UK or ITN on the future of learning technologies. So thanks a lot for the collaboration there. You're welcome. Thank you for everything you've done. I mean, I, I can't stress enough just how uh, uh, supportive uh, the, the support the support team is a simple cloud you know you you email them and you get you get exactly the response you need straight away um every single problem that we've had i'm always worried that we're just going to upset you because we're constantly going this isn't working the way we think and it's always something at our end it's never your platform but like there's something wrong with our internet connection or one of the students needs a plug-in there's always a response straight away and the solution's sorted out so uh it's an incredibly flexible and versatile system but the what really makes simple cloud work for us as an institution is just that that back end support of the platform. Great, great. No, thanks a lot for sharing that story. It's great to hear. Um, I, I put it in the chat, but one thing I want to mention is if anyone has any questions, please just put them in the chat. You know, we'll, we'll answer them um, in due course. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over now, and, and just for the last part of the presentation, I want to share a, a new feature that we've integrated, which essentially allows um, educational institutions uh, gives them a, a classroom management. Um, package or, or option, for lack of a better word. And this this is part of Simple Cloud. It's free to use within the platform. Um, I, I will say that we're happy to give a bigger demo, a broader demo of the platform to anybody who wants to see it. You know, just shoot an email to me afterward. Um, but this, this will be very focused specifically, like I said, on a, a classroom management feature built into the platform. So I'm going to um, share my screen. Jump in. I don't know, Olivia, can you see, hopefully, um, you can see my, my cursor and the screen. Um, so I, I'm, I'm actually on a, on a virtual machine on Simple Cloud and um, basically running a, running a program that would allow a teacher um, or someone in a training setting to manage, the, manage and see the screens of up to 50 students or, or attendees of a class. Um, and basically what you can see here um, are, are kind of the main, the main icons of things I can do um, as a teacher um, in terms of managing a class setting. Off to the left, you can see my students or you know, basically students that are logged in and using the machine. I have a few people logged in um, as examples, but what's really neat is you can, you can as a teacher, um, you, can, you can jump in and, and interact with students individually. You know, basically just by right clicking, you can jump in and um, uh, uh, remote view, take control of a student's uh, machine individually, or, or you can do things collectively with the larger group of students that you see on screen. Um, I, can, I can demo content. Um, you know, if I have uh, uh, PowerPoints to share, things like that, I, I can demo and once again show individual students or the group. Um, if I need to, I can lock the screen. If, if I need to get students' attention, um, I can hit the, lock, hit the lock button. I'll show an example of that. And if, uh, if I need to get a specific student's attention, I can, I can lock that individual screen um, or I can lock everybody's screen. And, and when I'm done, and, and what that student will see is basically a lock icon and, and um, their, their screen will be frozen, but they'll still be able to hear me and see the content I'm showing. Um, another, another option, I can, I can remote view screens. So if I need to jump in and 
the particular, if a student's having um, trouble with a particular lesson or needs help, I can, I can remote view and see what they're seeing uh, more clearly. Um, or, or I can um, actually jump in and take control of the, of the student's machine as well. And I'm going to select a specific computer. That. Um, and then uh, I think one of, the, one of the last pieces is I can also share um, websites, you know, if I need to pull something or, or I can text students individually. Um, and then when I'm done with classes from the end of the day, I can power down an individual student's machine or power down um, a machine um, for the full classroom. Um, so it's def definitely, a, definitely a very neat tool, um, gives, gives teachers I think, quite a bit of control over the classroom. Um, and with that, I think, um, I think we're, I don't know if anybody has any questions, we're open for questions on this side. I just want to say that we've got uh, Linux workstations uh, working as well uh, now in parallel to the, to the Windows Now ones and uh, a, a lot of other things to be, uh, to be announced soon. Please. How does it work on, uh, there is a question from Nicholas, um, which is how does it work for students on phones or tablets? I think that uh, James has, uh, has given a perfect example with this uh, uh, lady from Japan that was using Maya uh, on her tablet, uh, connecting to the virtual workstation through the app, uh, which was on the tablet. So indeed, from, uh, from phones or tablets, uh, you can absolutely use it. To give you a sense, we are using it in the world of construction, engineering, and architecture, uh, where people go on the construction site you know, they just have their tablets and they connect via their uh, the, the air, via their phone uh, card or 4G uh, and can see all the maps on Beam and Revit. Uh, that's an example of usage. But uh, in the case of uh, working in art uh, and other things, uh, tablets are absolutely fine, indeed. And uh, all, all that makes it, you know, easy for uh, for students uh, to be able to use all the tools that the teacher want. Uh, it makes it easy for the teacher to give access, secure access to all the tools, uh, and change their programs and all that. And in parallel to that, there is a workflow management, which is a subject for a. Uh, uh, another discussion, but we are trying to make it simple, uh, even for the most demanding courses, uh, and provide all the additional services that goes alongside, uh, you know, including rendering, build, simulation for PC labs and research. Scott, did you want to conclude, or maybe Christoph yeah. and James, uh, you want to have a last word? Yeah, I mean, Christoph, James, any other, any other comments on your side? Uh, one thing that I didn't mention also was, that was very interesting for us with Simple Cloud is uh, uh, assuming that we have a good internet connection, of course. That was the only solution we found that was working well. Uh, oh, we have a lot of students doing art projects. Uh, and so using ZBrush on a, on a cloud uh, station is, uh, is challenging because of... Uh, we use a lot of pressure sensitivity on tablets like Cintiq and, uh, and things like that. And, and Simple Cloud was working extremely well for that. So, uh, so that was also a big, big plus for for us. Uh, so not as much in game design because we're focusing on mechanic, but the uh, animation department, the uh, concept art department, were were using it, uh, and, and that was a, a perfect solution for that. So, uh, so, so it's it's simple, but uh, it's quite powerful. Uh, and, uh, and so that removed a lot of friction with, uh, with our students. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Christoph. Um, I'm gonna, James, any, any other thoughts from your side? Uh, no, no other thoughts. I think I've said everything I need to say. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just- Matt, oh, no. did you want to add uh, anything from your long education perspective? No, I, I think since I've been working in this kind of pandemic world about synchronous learning um, that, that even post pandemic, the, the value of providing um, synchronous opportunities is gonna be very, very important in, in institutions. Um, you know, to have, have them be able to 
deliver beyond the, the you know the the walls of the institution is very important and the flexibility of that knowing that uh things have fundamentally changed in higher education and so i think this is a great solution to be able to um be part of the of the tool sets for institutions to to deliver and uh and and i'm i'm very supportive of of the technology that they're they're building so that, that's what i would i would add thank you kindly hi andy gonna... did you want to add a word good long time no see unfortunately yeah hi there um no yeah sorry i was running late to joining you joining you both there and everyone here um you know the many competing demands of <laughs> lockdown life <laughs> and conflicting deadlines it's very good to hear that um, software like ZBrush runs very smoothly with, uh, across our kind of game design degrees. We've got a lot of very um, demanding software so um, and concepting and stuff like that. So that was very good to hear. Um, I don't have any other questions right now, but it's been very good to see that, you know, the virtual performance stuff as well, because we're very much interested in sort of mocap and the kind of collaborative uh, aspects of, uh, you know, uh, different kind of course pathways uh, working together. So I think that was really, really interesting to see as well. Thanks. Well, very happy uh, to, to share more details on that. J just to give you an idea, in parallel to what we are doing in education, I mean, we've got a very large uh, AAA tentpole movie done in Hollywood with using the platform. We've got two very large uh, multi-continent uh, animation projects which are going on. Uh, and uh, quite a lot of gaming projects with renowned uh, companies. So uh, a lot of the specific problematics that you may have in different courses, uh, we are very happy to, to address with very concrete examples. And I didn't mention the world of architecture and engineering where we do loads in parallel to that. So any demanding situation can be answered. And uh, as James pointed out, uh, it's all about the reactivity and finding the right tweak. And that's where we try to be very uh, client and friend centric in answering any special needs. Great to see you, sir. All right, I, I put um, on the screen up basically our contact information. So if you have any questions or would like to see a broader demo of, of more in terms of what the platform offers, please just uh, send me an email. Um, happy to happy to jump on and, and give you a demo at any time, and uh, yeah, I just want to thank uh, thanks Christoph and James for joining today. Thanks for your, your stories and, and for taking us through your experiences uh, and everybody else. And uh, I think that wraps things up from from our side.